Good morning. It's a little bit chilly out there. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> okay, I'm done whining about trucking. Just got to get that out of your system sometimes. And uh, we're getting ready to hit it for the day. Uh, 200, where to go? 265 miles to go, about 6 a.m. I could have got up about 4, but what's the point? What's the point? <laughs> so uh, we got, uh, yeah, about four hour drive roughly um, and uh, we'll get over there and see if they're open I do plan to call them before that to find out but I want to go up there to the doors make sure I've covered all bases and uh, we're, we're uh, gonna get this hopefully unloaded today if not then we got to wait till tomorrow morning so <coughs> that's where we're at got that morning old man cough the been smoking for 30 years cough you know uh, so, uh, just kind of dealing with that, I guess. But, uh, yeah, not much going on, man. I uh, am just getting ready to go. I had a couple stories. Can't remember what they are. Oh, I, uh, you know, the in the morning when your tummy's rumbling, you know, and you make a mad dash across the parking lot to get into the bathroom, hope that no one's in there. Yeah, I did that today. Yeah, that was fun. And I uh, guess I'd been sitting there for a while because they had the automatic lights. And uh, before you knew it, I was sitting in the dark all by myself and uh, that was fun using the light of the phone to finish my business and navigate my way out of the bathroom and uh, last night kind of a funny story I guess it was it was annoying at the time but whatever I got stuck behind possibly the worst like the most annoying subway customer I have ever seen on the planet she was there with you know she was you know probably around my age 40 maybe a little older mid 40s um but she was there with her husband and uh looked like from what i could gather uh her, her two kids and um my logbook's being very slow right now um her two kids and uh one of their kids friends right and it, just the way she was ordering her sandwiches was the most inefficient thing I think I've ever seen in my life. You know, she's ordering, okay, on this one, let's do a foot long uh, 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 wheat bread, foot long uh, wheat bread, right? Okay, on one half, do salami. And on, on the other half, do ham. And then, okay, you got all that? Uh, Braden, do you want it toasted? Hayden, do you want yours toasted? Okay, okay. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, okay. Braden, where's Hayden? Braden, Braden, where's Hayden? Uh, what toppings do you want? What toppings do you want on your half? And what toppings do you want on your half? Okay, uh, uh, do you want any, any shakers? Any shakers on it? Any, any, any shakers? You know, and she's like the... Subway has sandwich artists, but she was clearly the sandwich conductor in uh, her family there. And it was just... What was frustrating about it is like she's ordering all these foot longs and half this, half that, and yeah, just cut it in half. I'm sorry to make this so complicated. It's just nobody all wants the likes the same thing, and and uh, th then they also they all can't eat a foot long. They can't do that, um, and that's fine. But they they just can't. And I'm like, this is the most absurd thing I think I've ever seen in a subway lady. <laughs> you know, you can just order a six inch, right? And then, then you can get Braden his own and Hayden his own, and and then you're not. It took me a half hour to even get to order my sandwich, and that was the only person in front of them. Not a huge deal, but it was like just why? Why are we doing this? Um, <laughs> and I was just uh, so confused by the whole thing. But uh, that's that's what I have to complain about today. And I wouldn't be me if I wasn't complaining about something. So, anyways, I'm gonna get this truck ready to roll and uh, finish this drive. Uh, yeah, okay, talk to you guys soon. All right, we've done it. All that worry for nothing, for nothing and no reason. You know what they never did with this load? They never scheduled the delivery time on it. Now, a lot of times that could be a really bad situation because you come in with a full truck and uh, you're, you know, they never scheduled the delivery. Well, you might be sitting around for quite a while, but on this one, one pallet, the guy says, well, let's get you in here and get you out of here. He said, you didn't have no appointment yesterday. You weren't supposed to be here at all, but they got it figured out and uh, we're all good. So I'm just waiting for uh, a truck to get out of my way here. Kind of a little bit of a tight uh, lot. So I'll let these trucks do what they need to do. And uh, I got it back into my door so we can uh, get this thing unloaded. 
awesome and I love it it's all working out okay and after this uh, I'm just done for the day there's we're not gonna reload on Easter Sunday that's just not going to happen so um, yeah waiting for uh, these guys to get everything worked out here and uh, from there I'll uh, I will uh, just get unloaded that's the plan that is the plan I guess I'm parked in <laughs> um, just like the the company's truck driver spots and the yard driver is all pissed off but the guy working in the warehouse he said don't even worry about it man we, we, we're gonna get him taken care of get him out of here and uh, send him on his way so uh, don't worry I got you don't worry don't worry <laughs> but he was uh, pretty annoyed that I was parked in uh, their spots I didn't realize I didn't know um, so that's how she goes way of the road and uh, we're gonna get ourselves in here I just got to jump back there open the doors and then we're gonna jump into our spot and uh, just wait for this thing to be unloaded um, and that's it that's that's the day so I'm gonna need to look up a truck stop somewhere I can go to uh, you, you get the point you get the point to park the truck talk to you in a minute all right there we go uh, it's got the doors open our one lonely pallet sitting there all by its all by its lonesome and uh, we just need to back into our spot I need to slide the tandems and uh, chalk it it's one of those places not every place is like that where they're like slide your tandems chalk your wheels all that stuff but some are some are I understand I, I believe the chalk your wheels is a DOT requirement I believe or maybe OSHA or something I don't know how DOT has any authority in a parking lot um, but I could be wrong about that that's my understanding of it. Uh, is it some sort of regulation that no one cares about? <laughs> no one pays attention and all that. But uh, hey, this should work out good. He said he's gonna tell those warehouse guys there's one pallet on uh, door 26. And uh, he said, they'll be happy to hear that. They'll be happy to get you out of the way. So, uh, you know, I've always said this, uh, things do get stressful out here and this, job can be real damn annoying sometimes but uh, just being polite to people uh, can go a long way so I was in there kind of joking around with him really polite when I showed up um, I knew there was something screwy with this load that you know the, the appointment didn't make sense with compared to when I picked it up to when it had to be here or what I I thought it had to be here <laughs> Um, and what was screwy about it is uh, no one knew it was coming here. No one even knew. Uh, this is same company, same company to same company, right? So um, no one knew, so they had to call people, figure out why it's here, what it's doing here, and uh, ended up that it was done, this one pallet <laughs> was done in such a rush that uh, nothing was communicated. And, uh, well... I got myself stressed out for no reason, if I'm being honest. I didn't have to drive like a crazy person all day yesterday um, and worry about a schedule or anything like that. I could have just planned to get here today uh, to begin with. But anyways, I'm gonna slide these tandems and I'll talk to you guys in a few. Well, we've done it again. There we go, it's delivered. Literally took them like three minutes. Unloaded, done, we're on our way. Week's over and we did okay. We did okay, we could have done a whole lot better but we did a $5,400 week. A lot of fuel savings in that uh, 2,000 pound Continue load. Continue one quarter mile to the end of the but street, then turn right. All the uh, stress yesterday was unnecessary. <laughs> it could have been avoided, um, you know, if the broker would have said, it's cool, get there when you get there. Like, just get there before turn Monday. Right on Port because that road. ended up being the case. And as a matter of fact, the guy working here and receiving, he was super cool, really nice guy. Um, he said it's a good thing I didn't show up on Saturday. He said that's our busiest day of the week. He said you would have sat here for hours to get that one pallet taken off. So, uh, yeah. All that yesterday, all for nothing. All that worrying. All that let's go, let's go get it done. It just None of it needed to happen. None of it needed to happen. But that's okay. You know, it's like that sometimes. Uh, brokers will get like worried about stuff say hey we need to get this there as soon as possible and in one mile turn right on ohio it, for bypass what i need to start realizing is 
if a broker's got himself in a position where he's moving that load and he's just like, let's go, let's go, let's go as soon as possible, then that is something that uh, maybe he screwed up. Maybe he should have uh, made that load move sooner. And a lot of times all that takes is money, right? Now this was $2,000 for uh, 2,000 pounds and about 860 In three miles. three quarters of a mile, so turn right on Ohio 4 bypass. Obviously that's a good rate especially in the current market. That's a really good rate, we'll take it, right? But since he was moving it at the last minute like that, he probably was trying to hold out, <laughs> would be my guess, and try to move it for much cheaper. And when nobody was willing to do it, uh, that's when he ended up in sort of an emergency situation where he needed to, check this out, pay a truck driver to move freight for him. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, completely unnecessarily unnecessary yesterday, but I don't care. It's fine. Can't be mad about that. Um, the way she goes, bub. The way she goes. So, I am near Cincinnati, near it, and uh, according to Trucker Path, everything really close to me is either very small parking lots or paid parking. Um, or uh, full already. Turn right to, at the traffic light. Um, it says no right turn for trucks. Oh, it means into this distribution center. Okay. Down here at the light I can turn. I was like, what are you talking about? No trucks. But anyways, um, so I am headed to a pilot about 50 miles from me because I'll be done early. Uh, so that's my uh, last chance to get my sweaty fat ass in a shower. Uh, so it's about 50 miles away. It's not the worst thing ever um, And that's that's what we're gonna do But yeah, everything close was uh, already starting to get full or or paid parking and stuff like that I'd rather just drive the 50 miles and uh, and uh, park and All that so yeah about a 50 mile trek over there We'll get her done though will and then uh, yeah we'll be done for the day three and a half miles turn right and, on Ohio uh, 129 East I'm not sure I haven't decided if I'm gonna live stream today I guess if you guys see me live later then uh, you'll know I decided to live stream instead of uh, put this video out so anyways I guess that's all I got for now talk to you guys soon good morning everyone it's Monday morning a brand new week we're uh, waiting to see if that load board lights up. We're waiting to see those $3 a mile, $4 a mile loads, looking up at the fuel sign and seeing that fuel is $3 per gallon. And it's two years ago and I just woke up from a horrible nightmare. That's what we're waiting for to happen today. <laughs> so, oh, the struggle continues, of course, but you guys know me. I love it. I love it. Well, <laughs> I, I have aged 10 years since getting back in a truck. But other than that, other than that, a uh, good thing old guys are in these days, or that would be tragic, right? Getting 10 years older. But right now, it kind of works to your advantage, fellas. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, okay? Um, anyways, uh, yeah, we're uh, we're up waiting to hear from uh, Dispatch, of course, to see what we got going on next. I've been looking at the load board a little bit, and we're seeing buck 76, buck 80, um, some $2 stuff. 225 things like that doesn't really get you to a great area though but hey we'll wait for that load board to light up i think it's uh what time is it here 8 30 here in eastern time so you know another half hour we might see uh some new loads coming up on there and uh, dispatch should be calling me to see where we're going from there so that's just where we're at with that and we're just hoping for a good week this will be the first week in a while where i had a fresh start on a monday morning uh no load in the trailer and just uh ready to go so we'll see how it goes this will be my third week i think on reefer second full week and the first week we did um I believe we did like 5,200, if I'm remembering right, 5,400. No, we did 5,600. Second week, we did 5,400. This will be the uh, third week. And I know those numbers sound bad. I hear you. Uh, my bad weeks in uh, dry van, though, were in the like 3,200 range, 3,400 range. So grossing another $2,000 to uh, have a bad week, what I'm hoping are the bad weeks uh, sounds okay to me, but I don't know because I haven't, every week's been consistent so far, so I don't know if these are good weeks or bad weeks. So that's just kind of what we're waiting to find out. I'm not really sure. Let me have another sip of my cappuccino here. It's hot. I just got it. 
I just got it. There was a long line to get in there. Anyways, um, today I want to talk about sort of broker behavior and uh, some of the weird stuff they do. As you guys have been following uh, the last couple videos, I'm sure uh, I was really hustling to get this load done against all odds and I didn't make it. There was no way to make it. We had picked up that load at 4.30 p.m. on uh, Friday. I was down to an hour and 45 minutes on my clock um, and we had 860 miles to go by end of day Saturday just whenever I got there according to the load that was sent to me. Right? Um, and uh, I'm like, man, this is going to be really tight. We wake up the next morning, 750-ish miles roughly to go. I don't remember specifically. And I said, if we can just run today, I think it was a little less than 750. But if we can just run today, we're going to make this. But if anything slows us down, it's game over. We're just not going to be able to do it. So, uh, well, we ran into what I think may have been a bunch of holiday traffic for Easter. Um, that's not even a holiday that's on my radar, to be honest with you, but I'm not really a holiday guy. Um, so I'm a trucker, man. I don't have time to think about holidays and, and things like that. I don't have time to stop and celebrate. I'm trying to build something here, you know, so, uh, definitely was not something I was even considering, uh, when I got up that morning, but here's where the issue kind of comes in, right? As I said earlier in this video, I got to the destination. I called them um, on Sunday morning, said, hey, are you guys going to be there? Because I'm bringing this load in. I think it was supposed to be here yesterday. Uh, it's just one pallet. Please, if you can just unload it. It's just one pallet and uh, I'll be out of your way. And he's like, yeah, dude, we're here all day. He said, come on in. Uh, we'll, we'll get it taken care of. Fantastic, right? I get there and I'm talking to the guy, one of the coolest guys I've ever met um, working in the receiving, shipping or receiving department of any place. Dude was so laid back, just uh, having a good time with life. And you got to like that because jobs suck. And uh, that guy probably should have been as angry as the rest of the people that work in those departments. Um, but uh, he was uh, super cool. And so I was telling him, I said, I'm sorry, you know, I thought I, I tried to get this here yesterday and just traffic and I'm telling him all my reasons for why I didn't make it. And he's like, relax, man. He said, this is a, a transfer between our warehouses. He said, we don't put appointments on these. He's like, it's, it's our stuff. We own it. Um, and he said, there's, there's not appointments. He said, normally it's a pallet or two. We pull it off. No big deal. No harm, no foul. Well, the problem is nobody told me that. So I like to consider myself to be a good trucker, right? I've had some problems the last couple loads. The six hour load time on a straight through, not my fault, but I ended up being late, which caused us to lo lose the next load because we were gonna be late to the pickup, which led to this last load that I'm complaining about right now, uh, where we didn't get it until the afternoon. Now, under normal circumstances, when I'm doing my job, I do hope that everyone else is doing their job, and I am not the kind of guy that likes to be late. Yes, it has happened. There have been times where I have been late to an appointment. Over a 10-year career, I think that's okay. I think it happens sometimes. But, I mean, I'm out there stressed out, right? How am I going to make this on time? Oh, God, now I'm not going to make it on time. And, and I'm communicating with the broker and he was he was cool he was like okay i understand just get it there as soon as you can right it would have been better in my opinion if he would have said oh yeah man like it, i mean take your time like i wasn't going to i still would have went as hard as i could have but if he would have been like oh it's no big deal these, these things don't have appointments i could have at least relaxed I could have been less angry at traffic slowing me down all day. Like, I'm not an aggressive driver, but sometimes I really want to be, you know. <laughs> um, and it was as simple as just communicating that to me, and then we've got no problem, and I just go on about my day, do the best I can, and at the end of the day, we're all happy, right? And part of the problem here, I think, I think I mentioned this earlier in the video too, is this was an 860 mile load and uh, we ended up getting it at $2,000. Not a bad rate at all, especially considering that it was a 2,000 pound load. Considering the current state of our market, it's actually a pretty damn good load, right? But why did it take until the afternoon to get that load moved? Because my dispatcher was looking at it all day. It was paying considerably less. He said, uh, 
hey, you know, if I could uh, get this guy to come up, I'm, I'm going to try. If I can get him to come up, we'll go ahead and grab that load. Um, and then, uh, then when he finally got it like okay this dude's gonna give us 2000 but can you get there by 2 p.m tomorrow 860 miles away and it's already 3 p.m by that time let's say and i said no dude i mean I'd, I'd love to take that load but if it's if that's a hard deadline um hard appointment i can't make it there's no way to do it he says oh, okay i'll get back to you he comes back and says, okay, the broker said, as long as we get it there by midnight, as long as we get it there by midnight tomorrow, um, then we will be just fine. Can you do it? I said, if everything goes my way, I can do it. If everything goes my way, I can. If not, then no, they're going to have to wait till the next morning. I laid it out. I already said it. Okay. All right. Sounds good. That's the problem. Just communicate with me. Right? I, I know there's a lot of truck drivers out there, brokers. I know there's a lot of truck drivers out there that won't answer their phone, won't put tracking on there. Um, you guys send a lot of text messages too, won't respond to text messages. Um, and uh, maybe that's more, hopefully that's more like company drivers because it, it, when I was a company driver, it's like, don't work through dispatch, right? I, I'm busy. My job is to drive the truck. Um, you can work through dispatch. Why do you even have my phone number, broker? How did this happen, right? But now I've I've done owner operator. I'm currently doing a lease purchase and I feel like it's beneficial to me to communicate with these brokers. Pleasant conversation can go a long ways out here. Absolutely. So they call me, hey man, how you doing? I'm like, hey bud, what's going on? What can I do for you? Um, all these things. There have been occasions where we got the next load because the broker's like, hey, that guy's all right. We got another load going out of there after this delivery. What do you guys think? Um, I, When I was dispatching myself, it happened all the time. I would get a load, get to work on it and uh you know got the tracking on re answering phone calls responding to text messages all these things that you're that the brokers expect you to do now i don't know if it's what you're supposed to do but all these things the brokers expect you to do um and there were multiple occasions where they'd be like hey when you get there i've got this load going here here i've got it on the board at this much what do you want um all this these things and we would have our next load booked up multiple occasions where that happened working with brokers isn't the worst thing ever and I understand you guys work with a lot of drivers that don't do those things, that aren't helping you keep track of the load that you're trying to move. I understand that. I do those things, okay? I will communicate with you. I will. So if y'all want to work with me, brokers, get a hold of me. <laughs> as long as everything's on the up and up on your end, then I'm sure my dispatchers can work with you. But you got to communicate with us. You know, you got to let us know what's actually going on. Don't tell us your fantasy of what you want to happen, right? I, I would like this load to be there by tomorrow. So I'm going to call the dispatch, I mean the trucker, and I'm going to say this has to be there by tomorrow. You know, um, just tell us what it is. That's going to make this so much easier on all of us. It's going to make it a lot better. And and then we we get along a lot better, right? I believe in communication out here. I believe in um being professionals on all sides and uh everybody gets a lot more done that way shippers receivers um even truck stops when it's it's been very hard to be a professional in a truck stop lately because they just don't give a damn that you're in there they don't care um but all that stuff you, you know your your dispatcher brokers shippers receivers all these things it's incredibly important to be a professional be an adult explain what you mean to say right Brokers, I'm asking for the same thing from you, okay? And I want you to tell me what it is that needs to happen. That's it. That's it. Um, I, I don't want to hear about what you would like to happen because we've got a whole reality of our own out here too. So tell me directly, this is how this needs to go. And then I can come back to you and I can say, yeah, I can do that or no, I can't do that, right? Um, I guess that's the terrible part about me not dispatching myself right now. The good news is uh, my dispatcher can negotiate rates. But when I was uh, dispatching myself, if I would see a load that's like this, the timing's impossible on this, I would call them and say, hey, is this like a hard appointment for delivery or, or what do you got? And oh, no, no, no. If you can, you know, 24 hours, first come, first serve, whatever you want to do, um, just as soon as you can get there, that, uh, that's obviously better. Um, so it's 
entirely possible this conversation did happen with my dispatcher and the information was not relayed to me. Somebody screwed up. <laughs> Somebody did. <laughs> um, but um, it just caused me to have a really stressful day. And I don't know who you people are that think you can cause me to have a stressful day. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I think uh, it would just be better. Communication. Let's all say what we need to say. Let's be direct to the point and let's say what's based in reality. You know, can I do this? Yes, no. That's that. Now, if I can't do this, here's what I can do. Can you work with that? Yes or no. And then we all live a happy life of brokering loads and hauling freight and whatever else it is we do. Problem solved. The world's a better place. You're welcome once again. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time out. Bye.